This is a tutorial on how to launch the Hortonworks Sandbox in Azure. Eight steps. Step one, signing into the Azure portal. So portal.azure.com. I'll pause it as I do that. Um, okay, I'm logged in. I'm at my Azure dashboard screen. So we just signed into the portal. Now we're going to go search in the marketplace for Hortonworks Sandbox. So in the upper left hand corner you'll see a button here that says new. Click on the plus button in here. Hortonworks. Hortonworks. Okay. We can see the sandbox. Click on the sandbox. Then click on the sandbox here. Deployment model. And create. Which will bring us to our next step which is create the virtual machine. Okay, Sandbox VM Azure is what I'm going to call it. You can call it whatever you like. I'm going to use simple name. We're not going to use an SSH key. We're going to use password, keeping it simple, but uh, not a security best practice. So I'm going to type in a password. does tell you that it needs to be I think at least 12 characters long. Azure Pass, so I have Azure, I have an Azure Pass which gave me credits. I also have Pay As You Go which has my credit card. Uh, you might have a free trial. I'm going to go with Azure Pass. Uh, I already have a resource group out there so I'm just going to use a sandbox resource group in West US but you can create your own resource box group. It doesn't mean anything other than it's really just a tagging mechanism so if you have other services like storage or a Hadoop cluster you can click on the resource group and it's a, like a project keeps all your pro, uh, all your resources for a project together. So Sandbox West US OK. Virtual machine size. I believe we need at least uh, 10 gigs in memory so I think I'm gonna go with uh, DS3 V2 14 gigabytes should be enough select okay everything's okay here except for we're going to want to open up some ports so network security group click here Go over to inbound rules, add an inbound rule. We'll call the first inbound rule sandbox VM. So the sandbox is actually a VM on a VM. I think it's the uh, Docker container. So this port is 888. Hit OK. So sandbox 1010. Port range 8888, OK. We're going to add one more. We will call this Ambari 1020. Port range will be 8080. Click OK. Okay, so now we can see two rules are added here, Sandbox VN and Bari. Click OK. Click OK here. It's going to bring us to a summary. We're going to hit OK. I'm going to buy this, quote unquote, it's not really buying, it's more renting and leasing in the cloud world. Loading information. So the sandbox itself will cost nothing, just paying for the VM and the storage associated with the VM. So I'm going to purchase. And then you can see on my dashboard it is deploying and we'll pause it here while it deploys. Okay, it says deployment uh, succeeded. Brought me to this screen. So there's a couple ways you can find the VM that you just launched here. So if you go up here in the upper left-hand corner, you can always go up there, and 
if this resource was pinned to your dashboard, uh, you could find it. So, oh, there it is right there. Sandbox VM Azure running. So I can get to it by there. Which brings me to that same screen. You can also go here and click over here where it says Virtual Machines. Go find that virtual machine right here. I'll click on this bring me to the overview screen. Okay, that brings us to the next step. So, signed in, found the sandbox, created the VM, now we're going to SSH into the machine. The first thing we're going to do is we want to go check just to make sure that those ports are open. So the way you do that is, at least the way I do that, is I go to network interfaces, I click up here, where it's a sandbox security group. Then I can go find the security group right here, sandbox VM Azure. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, faster ways to do it. And then you can see my inbound security rules. So sandbox VM 8888, Ambari 808080. Okay, so we're good. You have connectivity issues, that's probably the first place to go check check your inbound security rules. So I'm going to click out of here, click out of here, click out of here, goes back to my virtual machine uh, dashboard here, click on my Azure VM, Sandbox VM Azure. Okay, I am going to log in via PuTTY. So nice thing up here is you go up here to connect, click on connect, it's going to tell you your machine name and the IP. Okay, watch out, there's a period at the end here, so be careful. Okay, I'm on Windows, I'm going to log in via PuTTY. Okay, so I'm gonna, I already created a name here, so I'm just going to load this. I come back here, paste it. Okay, open. Okay, yes. So the password is the same password we put in when we were creating the VM. So I'm, instead of putting SSH key in, we put in the password. I'm going to type in my password. There. So I'm in. Okay. So next we're going to want to uh, uh, connect into the root at the, on the VM where uh, the sandbox is. So to do that, we're going to SSH P port 2222 root at local host. So SSH dash P 2222 root at local host. Hit enter. Okay, are you sure you want to continue connecting? In this case, yes, Y-E-S, okay, root at localhost's password, okay, it is Hadoop, all lowercase, so H-A-D-O-O-P, Hadoop, all lowercase, H-A-D-O-O-P. You are required to change your password immediately. Changing password for root. So again, current password is to do all lowercase. New password. Put in your new password. to go change, set the password for Ambari. So, Ambari dash admin dash password dash reset. So, Ambari dash admin dash password dash reset. So I'm going to 
set the pad password for admin. So remember this, because when we go to the Ambari login screen, this will be the password. Okay, so it's updating Ambari, stopping it, starting it. And I'll pause it here for a second. Okay, Ambari server, Ambari server starts completed successfully. So next step here, sign in, find the sandbox, create the VM, SSH to the virtual machine, log in to Ambari through the browser. Okay, so go back to your Azure, your main screen for your VM. You'll find the public IP address right here. So I'm going to copy that, go up to the browser. us to the login screen here so remember it was admin and then it's the Ambari password that we just created during the art Ambari admin password reset So, remember we also opened up that other port. And it'll say, thank you for registering, and then you can log in, and then it has all the tutorial information in here as well. I'm not sure why it's taking so long, but this could be an edge thing. I'm not sure, but you can see it popped up with the registration form and you can fill in the registration form and that will bring you to uh, the main page with the tutorials. Okay, there it is. Finally popped up. Okay, great. Next step, let's shut down the virtual machine so we're not paying for the VM. I'm going to go back here to my main screen. So. I have options. I can stop it. I can delete it. We just want to stop it so we can use it later. So we're not paying for the VM. When you do stop, you will continue to pay for the disks because when you want to start again, it needs to boot up from somewhere. So just keep that in mind. We won't be using the DS3, but we will still be using and paying for the storage. So I'm going to stop the machine. Yes. We'll wait for it to stop. It says deallocating right here. Okay, so the me the VM is stopped. I know this because of the the start button I can now is now highlighted and the stop button is grayed out. So next step here is we want to start restart our machine and so if you want to find your machine like I said you can go into the dashboard find your machine you can go over here to find the machine on this icon Azure Sandbox VM I'm going to start it starting virtual machine okay the VM is rerunning again so up and running again, restart it, and uh, the IP has changed. So if we want to log into Ambari, uh, you want to come out here, and you want to make sure you give, once your Azure VM is up and running, doesn't necessarily mean the Ambari service has started, so you got to give it a little time. So new IP, 8080, login. Matt, my password. Oops, it's admin. Sorry, it's admin. Okay, great. Okay, finally. So we shut it down, but we we're still paying for the OS disk. Then we restarted it. 
which means again we're now paying again since the VM is running we're paying for the VM itself and the storage finally when you're done you're never going to use it ever again you want to destroy the instance so the OS disk also gets destroyed so you stop paying for everything in Azure it's pretty simple go up here to the delete button do you want to delete the virtual machine and uh, unlike AWS it doesn't give you a warning it just deletes it so that's the final step